Hey guys, I was given this little mini driver by my boss the other day. He's telling me he's getting some tingles off the end. Nothing like a major shock, but just a little little bit of a buzz uh, when he would touch the end, like you know, holding the screw on the end, and he would lean against a uh, a metallic or earth uh, earth like a server rack or a, um, a piece of metal or something, and you know, pull the trigger and it starts to turn, and you feel a little bit of a little bit of a tingle and not really what you want to have happen when you're using a plug-in power tool. So I thought, well, I'll have a look at it. We'll tear it down and see why it's doing that and see if we can fix it, see if we can make some modifications inside. Now, it's a pretty small unit. It's a E-Value brand, uh, E-300AC drill driver. It uses like the little um, collar. You know, you put the six-sided um, bit in there and it just kind of locks on and then you know, forward and back, and it's also got a switch here on the side which turns on and off an LED here. So, first of all, let's pull it apart, see what's inside, and start figuring this thing out. Alright, so that was pretty easy to take off, just a couple of screws. Looks like we got, it seems like a ABS style plastic with a rubberized over molding there. There's no identifiers on the plastic, so I don't know what it actually is, but there's no glass fiber reinforcing there at all. It's just just injection mold plastic with grey over molding. So nothing special there at all. And this is what we've got inside. A little circuit board there. An on off switch is just a two direction on and off. There's no speed control at all. Another switch that's operated by this lever from you know, the switch on the other side to operate the LED. A motor with some capacitors, gearbox, and then uh, the shaft coming out. So let's zoom in and have a bit of a close look and see what we can figure out. Okay, so this little circuit board here, that's the first thing in line. We've got a capacitor across the mains. That's going to be a X class, yeah, X2 rated cap, 275 volt rated, and it's a 0.22 microfarad. So it's a standard kind of just a uh, noise suppression sort of capacitor with a uh, 1 mega ohm, what's that, brown, black, green, yeah, that's a 1 mega ohm resistor, just as a bleed resistor, straight across the mains. That's actually before the switch, so that's always connected when your plug is plugged in. Then it looks like we've got a, uh, a bridge rectifier, that's that black one there. So that's converting your AC to DC, so this is a DC motor. Then from there, it looks like we've got some ferrite beads with a uh, the, co the wire coiled around it. So that will be uh, suppression chokes to stop any uh, any commutation noise or any arcing noise coming from there. That will act as like a like a, a resistance to the high frequency noise, but it's not much of a resistance to the DC. So any high frequency gets blocked by those two cylinders. Then we come through one side we come out to the switch and then the LED and there'll be a, yep, there's a resistor in there, a little dropper resistor. So that's just an on-off switch, LED, resistor, sand sort of stuff. And on this side, we've got our switch, which is wired up to provide forward and reverse directions as you switch back and forth. I might actually do a schematic. I'll show you how that works. And after there, once you've come out of the switch, we come to the motor, and we've got two capacitors. And now these capacitors, if you look carefully, you can see there's... Your positive Y coming in here and your negative Y coming in here. Obviously that's going to reverse when you change your direction on your switch. But these two capacitors are on those terminals tied together down to the case. The reason they do that is these basically short out any high frequency as well. You see, the chokes, they block high frequency. The capacitors pass it. The capacitors block low frequency, pass high frequency. Chokes block high frequency pass low frequency so the DC is basically zero Hertz it's zero frequency or zero um, cycles a second and that can go straight through those chokes comes to the motor these capacitors won't allow that um, low frequency to pass through so it can't short across but any high frequency noise from the switching of the commutator inside like that buzzing sometimes when you hear when you turn on it a, a uh, electric motor like a uh, a hairdryer and you can hear the buzzing on the radio, that's high frequency noise. Now, these pass high frequency, so they just short that high frequency out. It's connected to the case to um, to help with that. So the case acts as a shield and that kind of shorts any high frequency around like 
from the terminal down to the case, the other terminal down to the case, and then across the two capacitors. Now these chokes, like I said before, they pass the DC, but any residual uh, noise, electrical interference, can't get back out into the mains wiring into your, into your house, because that's blocked there. So, what I'm kind of thinking is, maybe that tingle is coming from these capacitors. So if we, I'm going to open the, that, this gearbox, have a quick look inside, and it looks like it might be all metal. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, look at that. They're sintered metal gears. The sintered metal is, uh, what they do is they get a, a metal powder, and they don't actually heat it enough to, to melt the, uh, the metal. They put it into a mold and compress it really, really hard. Then they heat it almost to the point it's melted but they don't actually melt it and the metal kind of fuses it's called that's a sintering process they don't actually melt it they just cause the metal to fuse together and that's how you can get these nice intricate shapes without having to spend on the expense of actual machining or or molding but that's all metal in there that's got a bit of weight to it so our case of our motor which we're connecting to the mains with our capacitors that's going to be coming through through the shaft through the uh, the gears and out our output shaft. So there's a connection there. If, that, if they had some plastic gears somewhere in there, we probably wouldn't even have the problem, but then of course you've got less strength. So, in that case, what can we do to fix the problem? Well, we could always lift the wire off here, off the case, but that's going to increase the interference that this thing gives out. I'm going to have, to have a think about this. So here's a schematic of the uh, the drill. So we've got our AC coming in here with our terminals plugging into the wall. One mega ohm bleed resistor, which is there to uh, bleed any voltage away from the uh, the capacitor, the, our, our suppression capacitor, 0.22 microfarad. That's just so if you unplug the, the mains and touch the, the prongs on the lead, you don't get a zap from that capacitor. That'll bleed it very quickly. Then we come through to the uh, bridge rectifier. We get a positive and negative voltage. Comes around to here. Then we can come up, got a resistor, 43 kilo ohm resistor, a little 3 millimeter white LED in the switch, comes back down to the, uh, the negative, so that's just like a standard LED circuit. We've got our two suppression chokes, they were measured at about 0.02 millihenries, and we've got two of those, one on each line. Then we've got that switch arrangement here, I'll come back to that and talk about that in just a sec, how that reverses the, speed, the direction of the motor. But once we come after that, we've got our motor and then our two suppression caps on the motor itself. So this switch here, the way this works is imagine you press the, the button in one direction and you close these contacts. This dotted line, that means that the, the two uh, poles of the, uh, the switch are connected together. So if you flick the one lever, you get two switches acting in the same way. So if you throw the switch in this direction, we're going to have the voltage comes in around to the motor in, in that direction, back out to the negative. So it's coming around like this. Now, I'll get a different color. And if we close the switch in the opposite direction, now the voltage is coming around the opposite way. So the voltage is going, or the current is going through in the opposite direction. So it's a very basic way to reverse the direction of the motor. Um, these two capacitors are the ones that we're worried about. Now, you can see this connection here from where the, the common point of the capacitors to the motor body. That's, I believe, is where the, uh, the voltage is leaking out through the gearbox to the, uh, the output shaft. So the most simple way to prevent that from happening is just to erase that piece, that little wire there. We'll just lift the capacitors off the motor body and then we fix a problem, but it's not going to help with the interference because you need a uh, to ground that motor body to get rid of the interference that it, it kind of catches. Otherwise, you're going to get a more interference coming out of the device. We can see here on the uh, waveform. This is with the probe connected to the case of the uh, motor, and the ground is to just to earth. So. You can see there, it's a bit of a funky waveform, but that's basically the commutation noise that's coming through those capacitors to the case of the motor. Now, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see where it says Psych RMS. 
50.6 volts. That's what I'm, I'm measuring. The peak to peak is 152 volts, but we're worried about the uh, RMS mainly because that's the, um, the actual kind of equivalent DC voltage. So that's basically what I was measuring on my multimeter as well. And um, I'm going to lift the uh, capacitors off of the case. I've decided I'll just do that and um, see what we get once we uh, test that uh, in that configuration. And so here we've got the, uh, the new setup. I've uh, desoldered the capacitors from here and I've just soldered them up to there. I've put them in parallel mainly because I want to have as much capacitance there as I can because when you put capacitors in parallel, they, um, they increase in value. You, you add the values. Whereas it's opposite with resistors. If you put resistors in parallel, the, uh, the resistances subtract. If you put them in series, that is one after the other in a line, then you add them. So capacitors are opposite to resistors just through their, the function of the way they work. So I'll um, plug this in, hook it up to the oscilloscope, and we'll have a look at the, the, uh, the trace now that we've made the modification. And here we are with the, uh, the finished result. Now, all that jagged line, that's all the electrical noise that's coming from the commutators. That's what we're trying to get rid of, really. But we don't have an earth to get rid of that. And so instead, by connecting those capacitors, we're putting it all through whoever's touching the, uh, the chuck, which is no good. Um, you can see the RMS value has dropped to 24.5 volts, so that we've basically halved that. Um, that means there's a lot less chance of getting a tingle. Um, it's not perfect, but we don't have that earth. Um, Japan doesn't have a, a habit of using earths very often, so a lot of outlets are only two pin. They don't have the third earth pin, so I could put a earth lead on it, but then a lot of the outlets I want to plug into just won't have the ability to plug a three pin plug in. Um, so this is pretty much as good as it was going to get. All right, so that's all we can really do with this, this little thing. Uh, without that earth or... You know, without changing the motor to an AC brushless motor, there's not much we can do about the noise. Um, we've got to put it somewhere, and uh, at the moment it's just radiating off that that case now, the the residual stuff that I showed you in the uh, on the scope, or it's going to come out through here if we connect those caps up and ground out through whoever's touching the end of this. So I'm going to say, uh, it's it's half fixed. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.